How's it going, my band of musical warriors? Gunny's back. I'm gonna tell a couple other stories. Uh, so, actually, you could see my kiss statues back there. That's what the story's gonna be about. Um, I told you in the first video, uh, the Gene Simmons story, that um, some of the travel and things like that is what's really, really great about being a Marine musician. And uh, following my stint over in Iraq, um, I got to choose my duty station. And it just so happened that uh, the, uh, the two billets that were available over in Naples, Italy, with the Navy band that's over there, which is the, um, uh, the gosh, what was it called? The CNE band, the um, Commander of Naval uh, Forces Europe band. Uh, but anyway, there were there were two Marine positions over there, and um, to be able to do that, I had to go to the School of Music to get my uh, unit leaders. Um, certification and then uh, then I my family and I went over to Naples Italy now uh, Naples Italy uh, I did a lot of traveling out of Naples and uh, uh, a lot of the trips were really really great but one of my favorites was when we got to go to Moscow now um, for those of us that grew up in the the Cold War era uh, getting a chance to go to to Russia was really um, something I never thought that I would get to do. But uh, I tell you what, uh, Moscow was was everything, everything I hoped it would be. I think one of the neatest things about uh, being in Moscow was getting the opportunity to meet and uh, play music with a lot of really really great people. Um, we were invited, uh, one of three bands, and actually uh, three groups of military, uh, because there were there were some uh, army units that was over there to march in the parade at the Red Square. Um, but the French ground band was there. Um, that would be this cover right here, the French ground band. Actually got this uh, cover from uh, a uh, gosh, what he was a um, warrant officer, uh, trumpet player, little bitty guy, but uh, man, he was really really cool. So this is uh, this is a a French military hat. It's it's uh, in that style of the uh, I always think of it as um, that French Foreign Legion style hat. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the French ground band was there, and the Royal Air Force band was there as well. And this is actually, um, they don't even wear these anymore. Uh, this is real uh, black rabbit fur. Uh, this is not synthetic. Uh, this is one of the the older style and uh, that's one of the neat things about uh, doing foreign work with the military is uh, trying to get souvenirs and uh, at that point having done this for a while um, I knew to bring extra um, marine items and so um, this cover right here actually um, cost me a uh, a dress blues cover so um, that's a minimum $70 cover but this particular cover here uh, the Royal Air Force was going away from using those and so this was going to be one of the last performances that they did with that particular cover on. They switched covers. They didn't want to use the uh, the black rabbit fur anymore. Uh, it was just a look they were getting away from. But um, my buddy in the uh, in the Air Force band uh, really, really was jonesing for a, for a marine dress cover. And I just happened to have 
uh, an extra one with me. Just happened to have an extra one with me. And uh, uh, the, the uh, French trumpet player, uh, he actually wanted a, a um, cami cover. <clears throat> and uh, believe it or not, <clears throat> I had a couple extra of those with me as well. So those are the two covers that I brought back from that particular uh, incredible trip. Now the other two covers that you see, this one actually comes from a Dutch Marine Sergeant Major. Um, it was the equivalent rank of the gunnery sergeant. Uh, I was on a, a Dutch ship for three months when we did a deployment to Africa and uh, I made good friends with the Dutch Marine Sergeant Major and uh, so we exchanged covers on that trip and then this one here is actually a Italian Carabinieri uh, cover. Um, Sal was one of the uh, Italian Carabinieri's that I got the pleasure of working with in Naples. Um, the Carabinieri is actually the, a police force in Italy, but um, they're kind of like the Marine Corps in Italy. Um, they're the ones that are known to not be able to be bought or uh, anything like that. They're a police force in non-wartime, uh, but they're also a military force um, in times of war for, for Italy. Uh, Saul was a uh, trumpet player, uh, also equivalent rank of gunnery sergeant. And as a matter of fact, Saul was uh, with us when we went to uh, Moscow. All right, now, we were invited to Moscow, uh, the, the Naples band, along with the Royal Air Force Band and the French Ground Band, uh, to help Moscow celebrate the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Moscow. Um, you know, the, one of the neat things that I, I've always been interested to find out about is, you know, we in, in America have been taught uh, very specific things about World War II, and usually um, it doesn't involve our allies, um, not the major, the greatest hits, so to speak. And uh, to read up on the story of um, what Moscow went through in World War II was really, really amazing. Um, the, the German army actually tried to do a classic siege. Um, they cut off everything uh, to, to Moscow. And so the citizens of Moscow went, I think it was 18, 19 months. Um, and the only thing that they could eat was what they could find inside the city um, and so you can imagine some of the things that they went through in order to continue to feed their families. But um, France, England, and America um, were able to defeat the siege and uh, liberate Moscow. And so this was the celebration, um, kind of a thank you. Uh, I would guess, to um, the three militaries that had helped them. And so there were not only the, the three bands, but uh, there were also um, combat troops uh, that were marching in the, in the parade as well. Um, one of the first things that we got to do was we were presented, everyone was presented with um, friendship medals. And so uh, we actually... My, uh, my fellow Marine and I um, got permission to wear a non-Marine medal on our uh, uniform uh, for the duration of the performances as a sign of good faith. But one of the things I love about this is the fact that uh, this is um, like a little... Hmm? interesting little uh, piece of cardboard, I guess you'd call it. Anyway, um, it has on here basically that we were presented this 
and uh, everything is in Russian, uh, including my name right here at the top, which I think is really, really interesting. So um, we also realized, and, and I noticed this uh, when we were over there um, in, in Europe, is uh, <laughs> Americans uh, English uh, has a tendency to change the names of uh, European cities. Um, so Moscow was actually the Americanization or the English basic translation. Uh, in Russian, it's actually Makba. And, uh, you know, we noticed that, uh, you know, Florence in Italy is actually Frenze. And, um, you know, uh, it, it, was, it's, it was interesting and in, I don't know, maddening uh, to find out that uh, it's common practice for the English language to change the names of the city, um, or, well, titles and, and different things like that, um, just to kind of make it more English, I guess. I don't know. But... Um, that, that was just really interesting for me to, to see that the city itself is actually Makba. But uh, we got the opportunity to perform uh, inside the Red Square. Um, as a matter of fact, my buddy Ben, a uh, fellow Gunny, he was uh, the drum major, uh, he was the first Marine uh, to march on the Red Square in uniform. Um, and I was the second. <laughs> uh, I was about six steps behind him. I was uh, the block guide, so I was right in the middle in the front row. Um, so when we marched onto the square, uh, that was actually the first time that uh, United States Marine had ever marched um, in, in uniform uh, on, on the square. But uh, the red square is absolutely enormous. Uh, there were 2,200 musicians that were playing um, with this parade going on around them. Um, the, I think there were, oh man, like 16, 17 different Russian uh, military and police bands that were there, uh, plus the three um, bands from other countries. And we were just all playing uh, this huge array of marches. Now, um, the three bands that were invited there, uh, we were actually presented um, just before the mechanized, um, what do they call it, the, the mechanized uh, uh, parade. So we actually marched out to join the 17 Russian bands uh, to play five, I think it was, five or six mass band um, songs. And it was actually kind of interesting because the drum majors of the Russian bands, all four, gosh, we must have been doing this for an hour and a half. The, the music never stopped. And the Russian drum majors had their, their maces upside down and we're just this for an hour and a half and to keep all of the tempos uh, together of this mass band that was just stretched all the way across the Red Square. So anyway the Russian bands and uh, us were we were stretched all the way across the length of the Red Square and the, the mechanized parade went between us and the audience. Um, and I think one of the really neat things is you're, you're going to see some of the pictures I'm showing you know in the different areas, but uh, uh, many of the Russian soldiers um, literally were getting in trouble um, to come over and meet the Americans, get pictures with the Americans, um, because it had been a very long time since the two countries had done anything together. So uh, the fact that they were getting a chance to take pictures with us uh, was a pretty big deal. And, um, you know, not to say anything, but the Marine uniform is definitely the most interesting. So anyway, we, uh, 
we performed in the Red Square. Uh, that was the main performance. But uh, we also did uh, uh, presentation inside the Kremlin um, uh, for believe it or not, tourist. Uh, it was really kind of strange for me was to see people actually uh, being tourist in Moscow. But um, so we performed in Red Square. We performed. Uh, we did two performances inside the Kremlin. Uh, we did three or four different parades uh, through different parts of the city, and we performed uh, inside one of the uh, Olympic Village locations uh, for a televised presentation, and then we got to perform in front of, and for me it was one of the largest um, crowds that I ever performed for. We were told that there was 390,000 people in this park, uh, and uh, all the bands performed on this huge um, grandstand, um, and I think I'm I even got a couple pictures of, of that, uh, just crazy amount of people. Uh, we got to meet, I don't know, newscasters, um, models, uh, there's a picture. Anyway, um, it was really uh, a lot of fun. And um, I befriended a, um, a reporter that uh, we saw several different times that kept uh, trying to get Ben and I to do an interview for his newspaper. Um, we eventually did do a, a quick interview at that uh, the outdoor performance with uh, about 390,000 people. Um, we did several things there uh, that was uh, PR related, but um, we were there for six days, and uh, uh, one of which we got to go out and tour around. And you know, I'm going to show you some pictures of that too. So you're going to you know maybe see them up here, here, and. Maybe they're going to appear here or, or, you know, come from this side like this and then go away. I don't know. Anyway. All right, campers, we're about to finish this one up. But I tell you, one of the last things that's really, really cool about uh, having performed with the, the French and the English, uh, that was awesome. But uh, we also got a chance to work with, uh, in the military music, um, the highest ranking musician in the world and uh, this was actually a um, a full general four-star general and his job was to uh, he was in charge of all of music across all of Russia and uh, he's the only four-star general that is specifically for music so that was pretty interesting to meet this guy and um, so you know you, you saw a picture of him but uh, what a fantastic opportunity it was to do that. And uh, we actually flew home. Um, we flew home on a Thursday night. Uh, so um, Wednesday night, I slept in Russia. We flew home Thursday. I slept in Italy uh, at home on Thursday. And then on Friday, uh, we flew out to London. So Friday night uh, I uh, spent in London, uh, actually on vacation with my family. But uh, that was some of the neat things about being in uh, Europe was just bouncing all over the place. We had a Boy Scout trip that we were in five countries. We left, we left Germany, went into Austria, then into um, Liechtenstein, then we went into Switzerland and then into Italy and then we stayed the night in Italy. So it was stuff like that that was really kind of interesting. You just don't get like that here in the uh, United States. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story. And uh, always remember, peace out. I love you guys. Stay safe out there.